Thank you. And now we'll hear from Judge Joyce Kavuma, a lawyer and judge on the High Court of Uganda. I um, want to thank Stefania and the team that has put up this. We thank you for the invitation to Uganda. This is the first time I'm attending, and I'm very glad that we are part of this. Um, not all hope is lost, like uh, she has presented. A lot has been done in the different uh, fields. I'll talk for the judiciary, what court has been able to do, and also what the government has come up to do. Um, the government has lifted the travel ban on domestic workers abroad for countries like uh, Saudi Arabia and Jordan, and there's been uh, bilateral arrangements made for stronger protections for citizens. Then also, our legislative environment has also been improved. The, there's a lot of uh, work being done on the regulations of the 2009 Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act. This hasn't been enacted yet, but a lot is going on to ensure that it's enacted. And uh, the Ugandan laws prohibit officials from holding victims criminally liable for offenses committed as a direct result of their having been trafficked. And this is, I think, one of the discussions also talked about that criminalizing the victims. We are working against that. That is not being done. However, victims, including children, were reportedly detained and placed on bond in order to contribute to investigations at law enforcement centers. Additionally, there is need for legalization of harmonized to, there is need to harmonize the different legislation that we have. For example, the 2016 Children Amendment Act required child sex trafficking offenses to have elements of force, fraud, or coercion, which went against the international legal standards and the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, and it also imposed lesser penalties on perpetrators as we have heard from the different discussants, once we have um, less penalties for the perpetrators, it will be very hard for us to curb out this vice. We also look at uh, the prevention measures that have been taken up by our government. There is an online portal, and this uh, online portal handles the external employment management system, which was established to facilitate applications by citizens for pre-vetted overseas employment opportunities through licensed companies. Um, as uh, my sister discussed, this has been a very big area. Many unlicensed companies came in, and uh, many of the cases we've had, most of these girls, or even the men, went through these unlicensed companies, and they end up coming home in uh, their situations, and it's very hard to investigate and prosecute the perpetrators. So with this system online, this is now becoming clearer. It's easy for one to go online and find out if the company they are aligning themselves to is licensed. Um, however, there is a report that was made in 2018, and in this report, it noted that uh, Jordan, this is a country, had issued visas to Ugandan migrants, these workers that had used unlicensed companies in the country. So we really need to talk to the different uh, countries about using licensed companies. Because if these people go through unlicensed companies, their protection is not guaranteed, and uh, they have not gone through our pre-departure regulation efforts, so it's very hard for the government to track where these people are. There's also an innovation by government to protect the rights of workers abroad, and this was negotiated with the foreign governments, and uh, it resulted in two provision of mobile phones with applications for tracking and monitoring of the workers abroad. Further, uh, these gains have also made it possible to identify 
and repatriate more trafficking victims, these victims who've been trafficked. And we are also committed to prosecution of uh, persons, uh, the perpetrators involved in this vice, um, the government and the prosecution, like she has discussed, there's been prosecution of many persons, high-level persons who've been involved in this, and this was a positive. Then uh, Uganda is focused on increasing investigations, prosecutions, and convictions. And uh, there have also been gains made involved in identifying and repatriating more trafficking victims and increasing the law enforcement trainings. Um, despite all this, there are additional reports of uh, increase in child trafficking and sexual ex exploitation of women and children in exchange for migration. But we look at this positively in that this shows that uh, many people are now aware of uh, the, uh, the evils associated with trafficking. So many more people are coming up to report this. Then uh, capacity building, this has been increased. Then there's a lot of training going on in the judiciary, prosecutors, law enforcement area, civil society organizations are all coming up uh, in training on anti-trafficking law and case management. We have the use of IT, that is uh, technology in court proceedings. We have video conferencing. This has helped protect witnesses and uh, the vulnerable persons, especially the children, can now testify in camera. And uh, this is being done in most of the courts. Then we have a specialized division, that's the International <coughs> Criminal Court. It's charged with uh, prioritizing all these tip cases, cases coming in trafficking. Then also that the magistrate's courts level, the magistrates prioritize these cases. And in all this, the children, their rights are protected. Then uh, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the Immigration Department conducts monthly sessions to train uh, the stakeholders, the different stakeholders that we have. That's the police, the courts, the prosecutors. Further, um, as government, there's a Uganda Association of External Recruitment Agencies. This was established in 2013, and it, um, it's where the members of the different lic licensed companies meet, and they're able to discuss and come up with the best ways of handling the migrants that uh, have signed up in their companies. Then uh, awareness is going on. I think, unlike before, so many people are talking about trafficking. Before it was, you know, not very, you know, people would not really, the communities were not aware about trafficking. All they would think of, yes, my relative has gone abroad to work, but they would not care to find out if uh, the person has gone through a licensed agency or if it has a contract or not. But these are issues that are being handled now. And um, there's also care and assistance where NGOs are coming up to help with the victims who have been identified. And this has, um, this has helped um, the citizens know that uh, much as I've gone through this, there is a rehabilitation system in place because uh, victim identification is now being done and um, guidelines are in place for adult and child trafficking victims. Like uh, my sister has noted, the Office to Combat Trafficking in Persons is also set up and it's responsible for coordinating the national response to trafficking and this is being funded. There is effective local and transboundary partnerships. I've already mentioned the bilateral agreements that uh, Uganda has with the Royal Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and uh, Jordan. And the two countries have accepted to submit quarterly reports on the status of every Ugandan workers. Then the government vets all contracts 
between international employers and Ugandan companies. And also there is uh, conducting pre-departure briefings for migrant workers. This is all being done. Uh, one thing I have to note is, uh, like has been discussed, teamwork is the best way for us to handle trafficking, combating trafficking. And um, if we can't work together, it will be hard for us to fight trafficking. You can't fight trafficking in isolation. So that's why having meetings like we are doing today, these are going to help us get the best practices in our different countries on how we are going to curb trafficking. Uh, I work with the National Association of Women Judges on a number of trainings where judicial officers are trained on how to best handle trafficking cases. And uh, during prosecution, we learn how should a judge, how should a magistrate handle the child, handle the victim, and uh, this brings me to what one of my sisters mentioned, the issue of uh, being proactive as a judge of magistrate when handling these cases. During our trainings, we are given an opportunity. You will get to get a live, like a person who's been through this, a victim who's gone to, through the system, is usually brought during the trainings. And she's able to give uh, a recount of what happened, how she went through the system. And when she's talking about her experience, you're able to see where did we go wrong as a magistrate who was handling this. Maybe I should have done this better. You're able to empathize with what was happening in her situation. So those uh, trainings of the women judges have also helped much in this capacity building. Then communities, NGOs have also played a big role. Um, we have FIDA, FIDA Uganda has done so much in uh, reviewing what has been happening, the trafficking uh, of persons. There's been educating of children and the communities on the dangers of trafficking in persons. And uh, the media information campaigns are being carried out in uh, our country. This goes right from the grassroots, the billboards, the television. There's a lot of talk about trafficking, unlike before. And this is attributed to the increase in uh, awareness. And I believe even after this, punk, this uh, meeting that we are having, best practices are going to be picked up, and these are what we're going to carry home to be able to come up even with better and, um, better and more innovations to be proactive in uh, the way we handle our cases. And I believe our next report next year for the next meeting will also be able to highlight what we have done so far. Legal aid is also being done a lot. NGOs are supporting so much in giving these uh, victims free legal aid service. And uh, this has helped equip the victims. Like my sister noted, it's so hard to get them to speak while they are before us in court. But when the NGOs have come in, they talk to these girls or the boys, prepare them to go before court, prepare them to be able to talk back in cross-examination, and you know, just let them know that the courts are there to listen to them. And um, also the issues of compensation, these are being undertaken under the civil courts. So the NGOs are coming in with care and assistance programs they help in counseling, psychological support, motivation, interviewing, tracing for their families. And uh, these are areas that before were not very recognized. Many times the victims would be left to, you know, after they go through the court process, nobody would follow up. But now this is being done, they're being followed up, and uh, some have even been able to get into better employment. Effective partnerships, this is very good, and that's why we are here today, because we get to network, and uh, through networking, best practices are picked. And um, these partnerships help strengthen synergies in the fight against human trafficking, and they also help us conduct further research on best practices to adopt. Um, I think those are the gains so far that we are making back home. And uh, we're here to learn. So I believe by the end of the meeting, 
we'll have more to work on when we get back. Thank you very much.